Welcome to Fix Chat. Our topic today is actually the start of our discussions on the methodology chapter. We are going to start our discussions on this chapter. There are a number of things that we need to discuss in the chapter of methodology, but uh, uh, we will not be able to discuss everything in this program. What we would want to do is to discuss the significant ones, the bigger uh, portions. And uh, I will leave you to research on the smaller ones. And so we look at the methodology chapter as a big, big chunk. Okay. Now, by definition, the research methodology refers to the plan, the structure, and the strategy for the entire undertaking or research undertaking. The plan is uh, the overall scheme to be followed in conducting the research. The structure, on the other hand, refers to additional uh, details, such as in the uh, additional uh, definition and clarification of variables of the study. Okay? And uh, the strategy refers to other details, the more important ones, such as uh, statistical analysis, how are you going to collect your data, how are you going to uh, analyze your data, and uh, things like that. Okay. First, we're going to look at what uh, we refer to as the uh, quantitative designs, the experimental designs. Okay. When we talk of uh, research designs, you know, uh, we invariably talk about quantitative designs, traditionally anyway, because in the past we, did, we have not had the opportunity to discuss qualitative designs. But beginning this uh, presentation, in this uh, program, we're going to talk about qualitative designs. In the meantime, let us talk about quantitative designs or the experimental designs. There are a few of them, really. Uh, first one is naturally called Design 1. <laughs> design 1 refers to a randomized two-group design. You randomly assign respondents to uh, uh, pre-identified groups, such as the experimental groups and the control groups. Then observations are made uh, from the group after the introduction of uh, treatment. That refers to design one. Design number two is also called as the before-after two-group design. What you do here is you conduct pretest first, introduce the experimental treatment, and then conduct post-test. Simple as that. Then design three is what is technically called the Solomon IV group design. Now, presumably, this is the most expensive design because you need two groups here. So this is a combination of design one and design two. It takes into consideration the following. In design two, we were concerned about the research designs uh, uh, possibility of sensitizing the respondents of the groups because of the pretest, but this is not present in design one. So putting together design one and design two, we are now going to uh, take the strengths of both designs into one design. Now design one and design two. That is the Solomon IV group design. 
Then the fourth group is what we refer to as the factorial design. Well, the, this is also known as the two by two factor design. In simple terms, it's really uh, putting together or comparing, at least in some experimental treatments, uh, the differences or the uh, effects of uh, two independent variables. Okay? Now, so those are the four experimental designs. But we have what we call the quasi-experimental designs. The first one is what we call the interrupted time series design. What do we do with this? The interrupted time series design. Okay, we make a series of observations. Let's say observation one, observation two, three, four, five. And then after after fifth observation, we introduce an experimental treatment. And after introducing that, uh, having uh, reached the, uh, the 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 distance between um, observations one, two, three, four, and five, we do another set of observations, continuing this uh, observation. So we start with observation five, six, seven, eight, and so forth and so on. Okay. Now, that is the simpler uh, uh, design. It is called time series or interrupted time series design. Now, there is another one, which is called regression discontinuity design. Actually, what we do here is that we select different groups. We select different groups from the, from the population uh, or from the, from the same sample. And in each of these groups, we will have one observation. And then we compare the observations, let's say for first, second, third, and fourth groups. And whatever the difference, that is where we are going to base our results. Okay? And they are really very simple. But uh, they are controlled. Now, we have another one. The pretest, post test non-equivalent control groups. These are non-equal ends. Okay? So you have group one. You have group one, which has an experimental treatment, and group two, which is the control group, or it does not have experimental uh, treatment. So in group one, you make your first observation, then introduce your treatment, then do your next observation. Well, in group two, you make your first observation and let it pass until uh, the treatment in group one is finished. Then you conduct your next observation. It's as simple as that. Those are the quantitative designs, uh, now research designs. Now, we talk about qualitative research designs. <laughs> this is becoming... Uh, uh, popular these days, you know. There are four research, uh, qualitative research designs. And uh, let me tell you that uh, sample is not, the size of the sample is not a big problem in qualitative research. You may or may not have samples. In fact, uh, most of the time they have one one specific sample or case, which is a case uh, uh, analysis. But anyway, the four designs, uh, qualitative research designs, include the following. One is called the phenomenological studies. The study of phenomena that surround us. What are the phenomena around us? These are the things that we would want to study. How do we relate to our surroundings? Hmm. It's a very interesting point. A second uh, design is what we refer to as the 
ethnographic studies. Ethnography is really uh, the study of the origins and relationships of humans. It, it becomes, the study becomes a little bit more difficult because you are talking of humans and you are talking of social conditions, social organizations. Okay, that is uh, ethnography. A third uh, methodology is what we refer to as grounded theory. You know, in grounded theory, you look at, uh, uh, you collect data that would allow you to explain how experience responds to events. Okay? You look at data, you look at uh, experience and uh, uh, the, the events that transpire. And you make observations from these different data, data sources. Then you have the fourth one, case studies. Well, these are different observations from different uh, groups about individuals, events, decisions, time periods, projects, and uh, other systems. They are holistically analyzed through the use of uh, one or more methods. Okay, so you're looking at case studies. One case, for example, deals with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, one who, oh, my little studies, economic selling power. One case, my Kinala Manpusa, what do you call that? It has something to do with uh, deliveries of. Uh, goods and commodities. Another case has something to do with uh, selling of goods and com commodities. Uh, third case, fourth case, fifth case. Uh, you can have many, many cases and in the end you are going to come up with observations about these cases and you'll have to compare and contrast. Okay. These are the different uh, um, resources or designs, research designs and uh, that have something to do with ex experimentation or quantitative and qualitative uh, designs. We are going to deal with another set of research design uh, next time and uh, that will have something to do with survey research. Hi, good morning again. <laughs> uh, we are in the uh, uh, next portion of our program today and we are going to deal with some questions. The, this is the Q&A aspect of our program. Some questions. We were able to receive a number of questions. I thank you for being uh, able to do that, sending us your questions. We are going to try to deal with most of them as much as we can. Now, what I, what the staff, our staff, uh, on fixed chat at uh, FICS has done really is to put together the questions and uh, uh, on my part, I just uh, looked at the questions and uh, determined which are related and deal with uh, these questions on a general basis. So I shall not try to respond to every single question asked, but I will refer to the general points. Okay? First here is, are there easier ways to check for review-related literature in the internet? Hmm. English review-related literature are minimal from where I am now. I think uh, the, the problem here is that uh, this particular individual is looking at literature 
in certain parts of the world where they use the uh, their language okay so they're writing in a different language not in the english language unfortunately as far as i can recall um scientific literatures uh, are are becoming frequently written now in different languages okay now if you want to learn more of the literature in the discipline that you're interested in and that is strong in some other countries you will have to look at the language from that country uh, if there are no translations um, it is difficult to to get some translations but uh, you can get this these translations from the journals themselves what you can also do is that uh, if there are any english titles you google the english title plus the author okay if you are able to do that you will get an english version that uh, so refer to the original publication the titles there oh there is one thing about uh, the internet materials that I'd like to share with you. I don't know if this is uh, uh, generally, if this is generally true, but many uh, researchers tell me that when they look at the uh, literature available with Google or the internet, they are wary about the materials in the internet, especially those that come from websites that are not known to other uh, researchers. I think they are concerned about uh, uh, whether or not these materials have been um, confirmed by other sources. That's why they prefer publications like journals. Printed journals and um, online journals, books, and specific other publications from known publishers. So that is what they that is what they do. Okay. Another question that we can include here is this: Could you provide a short lecture on how to properly cite? the idea with multiple authors. Huh. Not at this time, not now. I'm not prepared to do a lecture now. We'll see what happens in succeeding uh, episodes of uh, Fixed Chat, because we might have time. Okay. And uh, another question is this. Could I still use references five years back? Oh my, you should. In fact, uh, the unwritten rule is use the latest literature available in journals, books, and other publications. Use the latest published materials, which means the latest. But uh, we can operationalize that by saying the latest publications in this discipline are those that have been published in the last five years. Now those published uh, uh, earlier than five years ago might still be useful. Uh, most of the time they are already outdated. But uh, old publications are important as well because if you come across old publications, especially uh, the original publications, you can use them because that is the original. And you are going to establish the historical events of that discipline if you use those materials. But for recent developments, uh, last five years is a good time frame. Can you give us the best source sources of uh, review-related literature. 
I think what you have in mind is, could I give you sources which you can not only refer to, but simply copy? I do not have those sources, I'm sorry. Uh, what we normally do is that we really read the literature. We read the publications, we read the reports, we read the original reports. Those are our sources, and uh, they do not come automatically uh, put together. You have to put them together yourself, and that is that is what we do in, in when we search for literature. Here is another one. How do I know that I am writing correct literature in this chapter? <laughs> Review of literature. How do you know that you are using the same and using the correct literature? Well, that should not be uh, a problem at all. Look at your look at your notes. Are they related to what you want to look for? Now, when you do, uh, when you review the related literature, you are related means related to your study, related to what you want to do. Now, we if it does not have any relation to what you want to do. Well, get rid of it. But uh, for as long as it has some relation to what you want to study, you might be able to use that material uh, in your manuscript. Let's see this one. Is there any guidelines? Oh, guidelines in, in trying to determine if you have the code the correct literature or not. I, <clears throat> I am not aware of any written guidelines, but this is what I can tell you. If you read your material and it does not sound like it is uh, supporting your argument or giving re reasons that you should not uh, consider whatever uh, observations have made, then they are not related to your study. There may be studies that uh, uh, dealt with the same variables. Well, see if they, the variables and var treatment of variables are, sim are related, and if they are related, eh, you may want to cite them. But even if they are um, of they are using the same variables if the uh, intentions, if the objectives of the research are not related, then maybe you shouldn't use them. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a personal judgment. We do not have any guidelines, just personal judgment. Determination that you, do you feel it's part of it? If you do not feel it's part of it, then it may not be part of it. Okay? So, those are the things that we would want to respond to today. I hope you get some ideas. Um, when it comes to things like this, always, always make it a point to consider what you want, what you are trying to do. And if what you have read has something to do or is related to what you want to do, then there may be some relation there. So you could, you could start from that point. It is not, uh, you know, while it is uh, commonly done, it is not useful to be able to include everything that you read about. When you read the literature and you take down notes, there are times when you take down notes, they are good phrases, 
they are good uh, quotations, but they may not be related to your study. You shouldn't use them. They can only confuse. All right. So first, look at the material. Is it related to my kind of study? If it is, then take down notes. If it is not, show it. <laughs> All right, that, uh, that is the simplest way to put it. Um, next time, we will deal with other uh, examples. But for now, that is what we are able to, or those are uh, what we are able to respond to uh, today. Until next time, thank you very much.